Hello guys, and welcome back to CSI. Last time we finished Light My Fire, the arson case, and now we're gonna hop right into Garvey's Beats, which looks like a police car. Anywho, let's go. Patrol Officer James Garvey has been murdered. As a new CSI, this is your first cop killing. Unfortunately, it's probably not your last. Work fast and careful. Tropicana Avenue, go. Uh, apparently, Officer Garvey stopped to help a stranded motorist. Or someone pretending to be. To serve and protect. <laughs> and sometimes, this is the reward. We'll never have more important work to do than this. Hey, before we get started, I want to introduce myself. I'm Nick Stokes. I've heard a lot of good things about you from Sarah, so let's work quick to nail this creep. Well, do. Swap this. And then we got another split here over the too. head. Two gunshot wounds to the chest. <laughs> Man, somebody didn't want Officer Garvey walking away from this one. Hmm. No sign of exit wounds. No point in swabbing this. Severe head trauma like this. Something heavy, something hard's probably the weapon. We'll cast to the wound, it'll help determine what caused it. Yeah, so that should be this one. Microsil. Makes molds out of wounds. So <laughs> Nice. Okay, and I thought I there was a gun. Thirty two caliber mag. Probably Garvey's own piece, but we'll have to confirm that. Can I uh fingerprint it? Nice. And let's uh, pick it up. All of the rounds are accounted for. I'd say it wasn't fired recently. Good to know. And I thought I saw this earlier. What is that? Do you see that? It's the only one. It's no tools. Let's pick that up. Someone could have been holding this tire iron as a weapon. At some point, this thread could have snagged on here if it brushed by their clothes. Uh, I didn't pick up the entire thing. Assuming Greg will tell us if the blood on it matches or something. And then the uh, car. They'll be towing this baby away soon, so we need to get to work fast. There could be something important in here. Mm hmm. Computer? Peculiar stain. Wiped, maybe? Be nice to know what it is. Does that look like blood to you? Oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. Smells definitely blood. Okay, Luminol says we got a blood stain. Tried to wipe it off, but like the man said, blood tells. Mm, swab it. And then there's this. This is another cop's ID. Jeffrey Deschamps. And check out the date of birth. Deschamps is a 72-year-old cop? I don't think so. Uh, fingerprints? There's no prints here. Okay, never mind then. We'll just pick it up. 72-year-old? 
It's blank, but maybe Greg can lift an imprint off it. Maybe. Oh, I thought it would pick up the entire thing, not just the one sheet. Nothing else? I'm scared of missing something because he said we would lose it if we didn't. Okay. Doesn't seem to be anything else here. Can't swap this. It only takes us to the wounds. That tire iron may be our head wound weapon, which looks deep enough to cast, but let's be careful not to stretch the skin. Yeah, we already did that. Okay. And we swap this. Okay. I'm going to take an extra look at all this. Okay. Yeah, I think we got it all. Okay, let's... Mm, I don't know. Ward maybe? Because we have a corpse this time. Yes. The actual cause of death. Despite the power of the blow to the head, the officer was still alive. Unconscious maybe, but breathing. The two bullets in the chest put a stop to that. What did you discover about the gunshot wounds? Both bullets entered through the chest. Stippling is consistent with being shot at close to medium range. One struck the left lung and lodged there. Other hit the left second rib, deflected down through the stomach into the upper intestines. Ew. We recovered both rounds. Okay. Time of death? Pretty recent. There's some early rigor mortis, I'd say no more than three or four hours ago. What caused a head trauma? Pulling the scalp back revealed a basal skull fracture combined with conjunctival hemorrhaging. We have a forceful blow to the head. Hard, slender object like an iron rod. Okay. It's the tire iron matched the head wound. Well, I'd say it's a pretty good match to the skull fracture. Would not be something we would compare, you know. I guess not. Well, let's check out all the evidence. Yes? Well, gun? Garvey's weapon, clean barrel, fully loaded, not fired recently. Good to know. Tire iron? There were a few tiny spatters of blood on the tire iron. Matches Garvey's. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Uh, bullets in the body? Those oldies but baddies. 44 caliber, 30 to 35 years ripe. Of course, they could be reloads. Interesting. Documents? This ID isn't legit. It's a forgery. Pretty good one, too. Interesting. Page from powder paper. I used an electrostatic detection apparatus to see if the previous page's message made a big impression. Sort of like I do. <laughs> Here's what came up. Tropicana Avenue. Car on roadside. Needs assistance. Okay. Sample of blood pool. So you figure this blood came from the killer? No, I don't second guess you, Greg. I'd never hear the end of it. Wise move. We have a bore here. Casting no aspersions on present company. This is Suscrofa, blood of a wild boar, pig blood. Interesting. Uh, the wound cast? The cast of the wound indicates something slim, tubular. Like the tire art. Okay, let's see the thread. Cotton. Red dye present, but faded. Got another sample I can compare it to? I guess. Sample of stain in the seat. Pig's blood again. Genetically identical, and a decay rate comparison is a match. Okay. Can I look at the thing in here? I can. But I don't have anything to match it to, so that doesn't matter. Well, let's look at the print. Ooh. Well, this is no shock. Our dead officer's prints are on his own weapon. Yeah. 
that it is. Can I? I can. Legal public records. Okay. I really don't like where this is going. Officer Jeffrey Deschamps killed along the roadside helping a motorist with a flat 30 years ago. Unsolved. M.O. Deja vu all over again. A tire iron. Pool of blood. Blank notepad. Murder weapon. A 44 Magnum. In the grass under the patrol car. Only upside, it's a lead. We should check the crime scene again. See if there's a gun under where the car was. Yeah. We should. Because all of these evidence is like gone through. And we have nothing else to do. We talk to everyone. Looks like they towed the patrol car away. Oh. We got another echo of the Deschamps case here. 44 Magnum. Could be 70s era. Serial numbers filed off. Gunpowder in the barrel. Mag short three rounds. One in the chamber. Probably fired recently. Twice. This is a staged crime scene. How do you know that without picking it up? There's no prints here. Okay, this one does not prints. Okay, let's give that one to Greg too. Are you ready for this? Some freaks on CrimeChat.com knowing way too much about our cop killing. Hit the lab computer. I sent a link to the desktop to get you directly into the chat. That's okay. Can you look the gun first? Here's the ballistics report on our late officer's wounds. This 44 mag's a perfect match. You have your murder weapon. Okay. Sutherland. Not a lot of people will, but you might. Alley boy. You're twisted, man, but I like it. I'm gonna see if I can get there before they clean the scene and have a look myself. Ciao. Other boy has left the chat room. Love to solve has entered chat room. That's us. Where did Ali boy go? Sutherland, a cop killing. The most heinous of crimes. Quite frankly, this one's a masterpiece. Ali boy just went to have a look for himself. The cop murder I'm hearing on the scanners? That was you? Sick. We can't find this guy fast enough. Take a drive out to Tropicana Avenue and see it for yourself. It may remind you of another famous unsolved crime. Okay. Interesting. Okay, well, let's talk to Brass then. Yes? Can you track down the domain owner for CrimeShot.com? Sure, I'll cross your T's and dot your comms for you. Site owner Jack Riley, apartment on Mountain Vista Street, crosses Tropicana. Close to our crime scene. Okay. Let's go talk to Jack Riley. Mr. Riley? Jack Riley? That's me. What's up? We were at the Las Vegas Crime Lab. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about this shooting near your place. What do you know about the killing? Probably about as much as you, thanks to Sutherland. Uh, maybe even a bit more since you probably don't study classic unsolved murders like the Deschamps case. Right. What do you know about Sutherland? The same as the other 4,000-some anonymous users who post at my site. Zippo. They don't use real names, you know? <laughs> do you own a 45 Magnum? You probably already know I do if you checked your records. But you should also know I reported it stolen a few months back. Had a party and somebody got in my gun case and helped him or herself. As for suspects, I had 35 of my closest friends over. Uh, yikes. Is there a way to track Sutherland down? You know there is. If you're a CSI or squad. Unique IP addresses identify the computer he was using. But I got privacy issues here with my users. No warrant, no IP address. Well, if he doesn't want to give us that, he's definitely not going to let us look at his apartment. Listen, I don't mind cooperating, and I got nothing to hide, but I also know my rights. No warrant, no entry. 
Okay, let's talk to Brass about a warrant. You? Can you get us a warrant to search Jack Riley's apartment? Riley's hosting the website where somebody's bragging about this killing. Plus, Jackie Boy owns a gun that matches the murder weapon. Isn't a judge in town who won't let us check that apartment. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going back. We have a warrant to search your apartment. What a shock. Cop goes down, so does the Bill of Rights. Go ahead, go inside. For all the good it'll do ya. Okay. This guy's into true crime heavy duty. Whoa. Here's a book by Edwin H. Sutherland, late great criminologist. Same name as the thing. Can we pick it up? We can't use that here. No. No. Oh. Damn. Sutherland again. Sicko was at the crime scene before we went back and found the murder weapon. Okay, that's his IP address. I'm posting some pictures of this master crime for you all to learn from. Note the brilliance in the mimicry of the late Deschamps case. Down to the murder weapon, Sutherland. Okay. Guy greets us with the warmth of a cobra, but check this out. It's like he's our biggest fan. <laughs> I'm so sad I can't see it, but can't really tell what everything is. Oh. Caffeinated hacker fuel. He seems to have some brand loyalty. I don't know why I would be dusting for fingerprints on a can of soda inside of a guy's apartment because they're gonna be his, but you know. Condensation okay. messes with the quality of prints we can lift. Don't know how useful these will be. Yeah, can we pick it up? We can't use that here. No, we don't pick that up either. That seems to be it. Okay. Wait, can we look at this? Okay, let's see if we can do something about the print. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Okay, wait, we picked this up too. I don't think we can do anything with those. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Yeah, and that's the IP address thing, so that will be with brass. We have the fingerprint. Yeah, no results. Probably because it's kind of smudged. But let's talk to Brass. This case is starting to leak out to the news thanks to our friends at crimechat.com. Tell me you got something good. What can we do with Sutherland's unique IP address? We can track the computer he posted from. Computer Lab UNLV, classroom building complex, where they teach criminal justice. That's fitting. He's hoping we'll be teaching some creep a class in that real soon. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait. Does Jack Riley have any kind of connection with the university? Let's ask the magic screen. Oh, yeah. Graduate. Ten years back. Criminal justice major. Okay. So, can we talk to him again then? Because I need to talk to him about all this. Yeah, I don't need to look inside, I think. Do you have access to university facilities? Well, sure. Anybody with an alumni card does. I mean, I got library privileges and stuff. You know, it's nice getting something out of going to college. All right, I'm going to tell you what happened. All you have to do is nod when I'm finished. You have an interest in forensics and started this chat room. Of course. You're hip at posting things from your own computer. Well, that'd be easy to track. 
you want to post something anonymously, you go to another one, say, a computer on campus. You know your way around there, blend in easy enough, pick a machine away from any others in use, and get off on posting photos of crimes, like the murder you just committed. Are you high? I didn't kill that cop. You can't think that I'd do something like that. I'm into solving crimes, not committing them. Maybe you wanted to go up against the big boys. <laughs> oh, please. Give me a break. I didn't kill anybody. Right? I would never kill anybody. Those Sutherland postings, those aren't mine. Really? Don't you have access to the college computer lab? No. My alumni card doesn't take me that far. I would need a computer account. It's extra. Check it out, you'll see. Quit guessing. Stick to the facts. That's what CSIs do, right? Cracking a simple university login. That's what hackers do, right? You're a computer guy. By the way, don't leave town. You're still a suspect. Oh my god, Nick. What's wrong with your hand? Okay. What is your involvement with the university? I'm a grad. Starts and ends there. Okay, well, let's go there now. Professor Franklin? That you? Nick? Nick Stokes? <laughs> well, look at you. I'd ask how you are, but that's obvious. I thought you were still at Rice, sir. I didn't know you were at UNLV. Class is out, Nick. Y you don't have to call me, sir. Uh, department here had an opening in theory reconstruction. How could I refuse? Well, you wrote the book. Literally. You'd be a boon to any faculty. Very kind of you to say, Nick. Especially since you're not fishing for a grade. This time. And I understood you to be working in Dallas, CSI level one. Problems? No, no, I could have stayed, but it was time for a change, you know, and the chance to work with Gil Grissom. And to get out of the shadow of a certain Supreme Court justice also named Stokes? Maybe just a little. Have to envy you, my boy, working in the field, solving real crimes. <laughs> Not some premature fossil working the academia beat for 25 years. Decent CSIs aren't that hard to come by. Now, great teachers? That's a rarity. You do my self-esteem a world of good, Nick. But that's not why you dropped by, is it? I wish. Thing is, we have a cop killing. And believe it or not, there's a link to the university. You could help by answering a few questions. You sounded so jealous. Oh. And while they were talking, I noticed this. Somebody's not so good at cleaning up after themselves. But more importantly, We've now found the same brand of soda in both the computer lab and Riley's apartment. Well, last time we could find fingerprints, so let's do it again. Oh, yeah. It might be hard to get good prints from a can, but it's worth a shot. Can we pick this one up? We can't use that here. Nope. Should have known. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything. Let's just talk to him. Which computer is linked to the IP address? This one, right here. Who used that computer recently? Earlier in the day, I, I couldn't say, but I just met with a student, John Laskin, going over some coursework. And uh, he was on that machine. Not, not to tell you how to do your work, but dusting for prints would be rather pointless with all the traffic in here. We're not doing it, I guess. Wish we could. Okay. What is John Laskin's area of research? Laskin has been digging into various unsolved crimes. A uh, promising student, right? Doing well in my course. Interesting. Now, where can we find this bright, promising student of yours? I believe he lives on campus. Surely your department has access to the university's housing database. Tracking him down should be child's play. Mm hmm. Who has access to this computer lab? Every lab on this floor is strictly for criminal justice students, and the computer lab is reserved for grad school level only. Ever heard of the Jeffrey Deschamps case? A little surprised you'd have to ask that question. That was my first big success. I wrote the book about that great unsolved case. Do you need my help? Okay. Wait. Is 
Sutherland. No, that's not it. Uh, Owns Books by Edwin H. Sutherland. Yeah. Okay. What kind of access do you have to the computer lab? If you need to get in for further investigation, I can help. I have keys to the lab and the building itself. 24-hour access. Good to know. Okay, let's see if we can track down this Laskin character. And what have we learned at the university? Can you check out John Laskin, student at blah blah no blah? No problem. Mr. Laskin is a criminal justice grad student. No publications. Lives on campus. Okay. Can you bring him in? Oh yeah, we'll enroll him in my class. Now this is something. You know, studying this stuff is one thing. Books, abstract theory, famous cases. But this, a real interrogation room, real CSIs. Real murder. You want to help? Absolutely. Interrogate away. Well, I noticed your clothes there. Have you changed your clothes recently? No. Why? You find threads or something? Something. Definitely did. Would you mind if we took a thread sample of your sweater? Well, sure, no problem, but just be careful. I'm just a guy scratching by in a partial scholarship. Don't have much of a clothes budget. Okay. There's something compared to you. Okay. Are you familiar with CrimeChat.com? I log on now and then, but like any chat room, it's just people BSing. I got mounds of coursework, plus I'm a TA, you know, supervising labs. Not much free time. Where were you during the time of the murder? Monitoring a midterm. Intro to corrections, 30 undergrads. Hey, does this mean I'm a suspect? Cool. I, I mean, <laughs> since I didn't do it, cool. <laughs> this is like field research. Yeah. What is the focus of your research? Hey, it sounds dry, but it's fascinating stuff. A longitudinal study of criminal investigators and pathologists who've worked long-term on unsolved cases. You're right, that does sound dry. Does your research include the Deschamps case? Oh yeah, that's a classic. Unsolved for 30 years, you know. Can't imagine chasing a case for that long. Hey, this was great. Real honor. You find that killer. Drown that sucker in evidence. Okay, let's take his thread to Greg. Yes? Okay, can we try and compare it? To uh, this. Similar, but not exactly the same. Greg's opinion's what we should trust. Okay. Hello, Greg. Using the microspectrophotometer, we get a fiber match on your red thread, but not a color match. Similar sweater, though. Probably an older one. Okay. Email from Brass. Sutherland is chatting again. Every cop in town's heading over to UNLV to try and catch him in the act. Including you guys. Go already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just do this. No results. Got it. Can I compare it to this? No results. Okay. Never mind. Okay, let's let's go there, I guess. Uh there. Damn. Well, he was here. And we're here now. So let's process this place like a crime scene. Another one of those cans. Yeah. Oh. Sweater. That seems to be everything that's in here okay like the laskin kids but older let's process this baby for evidence then get it over to greg process first give to greg after little okay. white flakes probably danger from the owner yeah 
Let's, uh, lifting tape. Nice. Uh, can I back out? Thank you. Uh, more. Okay, let's take those to Greg. Hey guys, what's up? Dandruff? I'll warm up the thermocycler to amplify the DNA on this dandruff flake, but I need some suspect samples for comparison. Okay. Uh, the sweater? Now this sample does match the thread on the tire iron. Find the guy who used to be inside this sweater. You got yourself a link to the crime scene. Okay. That was this one and, uh, this one. Uh, looks pretty close to me. Final word goes to Greg, though. Yeah, those definitely look the same. Okay, let's go back to brass. Need me for something? I want all the DNA samples. Yeah, just because this guy was Nick's teacher doesn't give him a pass. Go back out to that school and see what his DNA teaches us. And this. We got plenty on him for a warrant. Go to his place and get your sample. And John Laskin's sample. Laskin's alibi checked out. He was supervising an exam. Cross this guy off the suspect list. Okay. Well, let's get Jack Riley's then. We have a warrant to take a DNA sample from you for analysis. So it's not enough you make me aid and abet you guys invading my website visitors' privacy. You gotta invade the inside of my mouth too? Yes. Any other indignities while you're at it? Full cavity search maybe? You got the gloves for it. I mean, since you're asking so nicely. Okay, let's get Franklin's thing. Where were you when the crime was being committed? Well, in my office, marking some papers. Can anyone substantiate that? A teaching assistant, maybe? A fellow professor that dropped by? No. I go to my office at that hour specifically for solitude. I was quite alone. I'd like to take a DNA sample from you for analysis. For what reason? Surely I'm not a suspect in your investigation. You know how it is, sir. Just covering the bases. We're back to sir, are we? And what if I said you need a warrant to perform that affront? I'd say we do have a warrant. Well, I was just making sure you weren't getting sloppy, Nick. You know, taking advantage of our... <sighs> anyway, go right ahead. Okay. What do you know of the Garvey killing? Just what I read in the news. My phone has been ringing off the hook. Reporters asking me to comment due to my expertise with the Deschamps case. Is that why you're here? No. Okay, let's take both of those to Greg. Yes? I compared Riley's DNA to the dandruff flake. That flake is not your guy. Good to know. The professor's DNA markers match the dandruff sample. Looks like the next class Franklin teaches is going to be high school equivalency to the other inmates. Oh, come on. Not the professor. Okay, let's double check. All of these are good. All of these are good. Except the sweater. Okay. What can I do for you? Arrest warrant for Professor Franklin. Oh, man. The prof's DNA matches the dandruff on the sweater. Sweater fiber matches the thread snagged on the tire iron. No more plan hooky from justice for this creep. Let's get him. Finally, I'm being asked to consult on this case, being the expert and all. Frankly, I'd expected you to call sooner, but I'm happy to help you now. Sure. Consult with us on this cop killing. Consider the evidence. Which all points in your direction, Professor. Is this your red... Wait, this is the only one we need. Is this your red sweater? I believe that's mine. Getting a little long in the tooth, but then who among us isn't? Throw it away if you like. We'll bag it instead. Whatever for. 
Okay, that updates it. Sweet. That was the only thing we were missing. Okay. Tell us about your earlier research on the Jeffrey Deschamps case. Ah, the Deschamps case. A true classic in the annals of unsolved crimes. I'm the great expert on the case, and even I couldn't come up with a solution. Not a single worthwhile clue is found. The proverbial perfect crime. Why was a fiber from your sweater found at the crime scene? Oh, certainly not. No fiber was found at the Deschamps crime scene. Not at the Deschamps crime scene, but at the Garvey crime scene, sir, there was. On the tire iron. Young man, you don't need to call me sir. I appreciate the respect, but we're professionals here. Feel free to call me Edwin. Edwin? As in Edwin Sutherland? You must be new in the field if you don't recognize me, young man. Edwin Sutherland, the most acclaimed criminologist of all time. But then, aren't you a student of that pathetic, isolated old academic? That miserable failure, Professor Franklin. Split personality a little bit? Okay. Can you tell us about the Garvey murder? Oh, this officer who was killed recently. You'd like me to consult on the case? I must admit I've been giving it some thought. Why don't you share those thoughts with us, Professor? Sutherland? Glad to, young man. You see, this homicide is quite similar to the classic Deschamps killing. And I must admit, your mentor, Professor Franklin, did some respectable research on that case. For a man of such average capabilities and limited intellect. Or did he? You see, your perpetrator was recreating the Deschamps murder, undoubtedly. The killer would have faked a flat tire and waited for help to come. It would only take a few minutes. Even in this tawdry day and age, the police serve and protect. The killer would have allowed the officer to draw close in order to take a good hard swing at him. But apparently he didn't notice a tiny thread snagging on the tire iron. The incriminating clue. When he was down, he finished him with a couple of quick rounds to the chest. Fast. Relatively painless. Yikes. The clues from the Deschamps case, of course, had to be replicated. The killer left a bit of blood near the body. Crudely symbolic pig's blood. Gun under the car, a few pages off the notepad. I made sure this was clear by publishing my findings on that quaint crimechat.com. But one must wonder how he would have so intimately known the details surrounding the original crime. Could he have been responsible for both? Okay then, may we speak to Professor Franklin again? Nick? Nick? Seeing you, it's... It's like seeing my own ghost. My own long-lost conscience. Something you want to get off your chest, Professor? I... I just can't live with it anymore. My entire career, built on one great lie. I was just starting out, wanting to make a name for myself, but you must understand, it was theoretical. What was, Professor? Killing that officer. Garvey? Deschamps. I wanted to see a crime from the inside out. I suppose every criminalist ponders the perfect crime. It was motiveless. Or at least the motive was so obscure that... Anyway, I did it. All those years ago. You killed Officer Deschamps and built your reputation as an expert on a crime you committed yourself. And now you've done it again. What, try and recapture some of that old glory? Yes. Yes. Nick, please. I couldn't help myself. Please, do something. Make sure I never do anything like this again. Help me. Professor, we'll see what we can do. I just reviewed the notes on your last case. Franklin apparently was racked with guilt, and the Sutherland subpersonality evolved to help resolve it. But it was your skills that bridged their gap and exposed Franklin for who he really was. Good job. Now let's evaluate your performance for this case. You investigated every possible angle on this case. It doesn't happen often. I'm impressed. It's because I kept going over everything a million times before I left the scene. Nick Stokes. Professor Franklin. Jack Riley. John Laskin. 
CSI Computer Lab. Jack Riley's apartment. The killing of Officer Garvey. was fun. Next time we'll hop into more fun than a barrel of corpses. A corpse inside of a barrel? <laughs> yeah. Alright. That will be it for this time. And next time we'll come back with the next case. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later. Bye bye.